Um, second, we have uh, Gisbert Schneider, who's uh, director at the ETH uh, Center in Singapore. Good evening, uh, Gisbert. Thank you for uh, joining uh, so late. And we look forward to your contribution on how uh, AI is contributing to uh, drug design. Thank you very much. And hello, everyone. Greetings from Singapore. My part of today's uh, seminar deals with the small molecules. We've heard about alpha fold and how to predict protein structures. And I will talk about how we can find ligands that might bind to uh, these protein structures by using generative machine intelligence. Now, but before I start uh, with talking about today's advances, let me dial back in time a little bit. Um, here is a, a citation uh, by um, Voltaire, the famous uh, French philosopher. Doctors pour drugs of which they know little to cure diseases of which they know less into human beings of whom they know nothing. This slightly cynical remark um, points to a fundamental issue we're facing when interacting with adaptive living systems like the human organism. We find uh, ourselves what I call at the edge of chaos. And chaos is characterized by three main ingredients, three properties, error, non-linearity, and incompleteness. We're facing error of models, our understanding. We, we just learned about uh, errors in, in protein structures, for example, but also errors in data and vari variability, errors of measurement, for example. Then we have to face the, the issue of non-linearity, um, drug action. One drug may work in one individual, but it doesn't in the other. We're also having the issue of non-additivity, meaning uh, that just by adding one functional group to a small molecular structure doesn't always lead to the same outcome. And finally, of course, I think you all agree that we have to concede our incomplete understanding of the molecular pathology. Taking together these fundamental challenges we are having when it comes to developing new medicines leads to partial predictability. Partial predictability. We can only predict so far, but some of these uh, big challenges will remain um, uh, will remain to be solved in the future. Now, AI to the rescue. We're in the era of AI, and uh, David Gunkel uh, stated that we're now at a point where we have AI systems that are not directly programmed. They develop their own decision patterns. And over the past, actually, 30 years, um, I and my team have been uh, exploring the question to which degree can machine learning systems, can an AI be creative? And we have we've applied these tools together with many other researchers uh, around the globe um, to generating small molecules that have a predicted bioactivity and drug-like properties. And uh, those of you who follow um, the world of AI more closely may have seen uh, this artwork uh, in, in even in, in New York Times um, featured, the Théâtre d'Opéra Spatial. Um, it is an artwork uh, made with, by AI actually, um, by uh, the artist Jason Allen. And um, there is an ongoing uh, discussion in the uh, community, whether this could be considered a creative uh, work or whether it is merely repetitive because it was generated uh, with AI, in this case, the Midjourney software. Now, but back to the small molecules. We want to design molecules de novo from scratch and we're using feedback learning. This is the age old um, cycle of deduction and induction. We start with a hypothesis uh, and then go in, in the case of, of molecules to synthesis. So they have to be uh, produced somehow in the laboratory. Then we test them in biological assays. And finally, feed the result of these assays back to some kind of intelligent uh, decision-making system so that we can learn and update our hypothesis. And hypothesis in this case means a small molecular structure. 
AI now allows us to augment human creativity, human hypothesis generation, the ability to generate hypotheses and to learn from examples by um, machine learning systems. And at the same time, in the laboratory world, um, the, the human can at least partially be augmented by robotic uh, synthesis and testing. And we've developed tools that support both parts, hypothesis generation and testing, deduction and induction, and even try, we even try to simulate this whole drug discovery cycle within one system uh, by using our software. And one of these software tools is TIGER, the target inference generator. Um, because the prediction of biological activity, as I outlined before taking the Voltaire example, um, is the most critical part uh, of this cycle. How to predict function from structure. So, we have developed tools where you feed in just a two-dimensional structure of uh, a molecule of interest. Here, for example, the marketed drug celecoxib. It's known or it's annotated, it had been annotated in literature as a selective COX-2 uh, cyclooxygenase 2 inhibitor, a painkiller, celecoxib. And um, we were interested, can we predict this target? Yes, we can. That's relatively straightforward. But which other targets can be predicted by a, such a machine learning system that was trained on known bioactive compounds? In this case, 650,000 structures of uh, bioactive compounds from the Campbell database. And here you see um, parts of the results. So our Tiger software predicted a total of 20 targets for celecoxib, we tested all of them in biological assays and found that roughly half of them, half of these predictions were correct. And now here you see uh, experimental results, um, uh, concentration uh, activity curves, and some of these targets, uh, correctly predicted targets are quite amazing. The Herc channel, uh, adren ad uh, adrenal receptors, the Rx scene re sex, uh, receptors, and a glucocorticoid receptor, all of which are off targets, which we wouldn't want to hit when we do drug discovery because they can lead to severe side effects. And indeed, for celecoxib, uh, the FDA had issued a warning uh, that might be related to exactly those predicted off targets. On average, um, we found that um, this, uh, these target predictions predict 11 off targets for marketed drugs. So now we have a system available uh, that very quickly and very swiftly and more or less reliably, um, say roughly 50% accuracy, every second target is correctly predicted, can predict targets for known drugs and molecules. It also works for natural products. And I'm a big fan of starting from nat with natural products for drug discovery because they have been evolved over millions of years to interact with proteins in the human body and have a very specific and selective function. For example, in an ingredient of grape, red wine, resveratrol, it's known to have cardiopreventive uh, uh, effects. We were interested, why is that? No one had an idea. And using this, this uh, prediction machine learning tool, um, we found estrogen receptor beta, as potently blocked by resveratrol, and this actually is known to be cardioprotective. It also works for more complex natural product structures. Here, the stepsy peptide dolicolide, originating from the sea hair, actually um, microbes um, producing uh, this dolicolide. Here, this is, this is an anti-cancer compound. We identified the first known target, namely uh, EP3 receptor. And this receptor controls actin filament movement. And if you block it, for example, with dolicolide, then rapidly dividing cancer cells cannot divide anymore. And it is has this molecule has anti-cancer activity. So having these and many other examples uh, available, we can now turn to the question, how do we generate new chemical structures that have a desired predicted activity? And here we also borrowed from DeepMind's earlier work, namely on AlphaGo, mimicking um, this this uh, this uh, this game Alpha uh, 
Go, or sorry, Go, the, 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 the game Go. And we converted this idea of a game, we gamified, you, can, you could say, chemistry. In this diagram on the left, each little dot, rep, uh, dot represents um, a chemical molecule, a molecule. Uh, a line represents a chemical transformation that is a chemical reaction. And the depth of the tree tells us how many consecutive chemical reactions uh, were performed uh, by, by use uh, of our software tools. So we start from, from a building block. You could start from an atom and then the system plays the what if game. What if I converted this building block, use it, I don't know, amide bond formation to form a virtual product. So we score the virtual product, compute some reward, then the system branches again, and by various smart uh, search uh, technologies, uh, we can search this space of up to 100, uh, sorry, sorry, 10 to the power of 30 potential virtual products and identify both suggested reaction paths and desired new molecules with, with predicted uh, desired activity using this kind of gamified uh, chemical design. Now here's an, one of these uh, applications. The goal was to mimic anglerine A, an anti-cancer uh, natural product from potato bush. It needs a 15 step chemical total synthesis to actually obtain anglerine A. So this is not sustainable uh, economically and ecologically uh, to use this natural product as a drug. And we were interested to design, to generate, automatically generate alternatives, mimetics thereof. First, we predicted again, um, the target panel of uh, this natural product. And we found among other uh, targets, um, the menthol um, receptor, transient receptor potential M8, a calcium channel, which is blocked by anglerine A. And on the right, you see the two top scoring designs generated by our de novo uh, structure generator, design one and design two, they look very different from anglerine A. So when asking chemists, uh, what do you think? Oh, I would never have thought about that. And this is how we see these de novo de design generators uh, actually uh, play uh, a seminal part in, in, in the chemist's creativity by acting as a colleague, um, a chemical colleague, a virtual chemist, who makes suggestions which we hadn't thought about. In fact, these, these compounds could be synthesized as predicted by the software in only three steps, and they've inherited the activity, this uh, calcium channel blocking activity of the natural product. Another example, more recently, we looked at merino pyrrole. It is an anti-effective and anti-cancer compound, and we identified using target prediction the first known um, target, and it's cyclooxygenase 1. It's a relatively weak inhibitor. Then we used our de novo design tool, and you see the structure of the top scoring molecule that was generated by the computer um, here on the screen. It could be synthesized in three steps compared to nine step synthesis of Merino Pyrrol A. It is a selective and highly potent COX-1 inhibitor. It is the most selective uh, COX-1 inhibitor known to date. And it inherited seven out of known targets of, uh, sorry, predicted targets of Merino Pyrrol A. Now, linking uh, back to the uh, previous talk, uh, we then solved the crystal structure complex between the de novo designed compound and its target uh, cyclooxygenase 1, also a first. And uh, this led, came up with some surprise. The de novo design compound here shown in magenta, in purple, binds in an opposite orientation than other known drugs, marketed drugs uh, that, that block cyclooxygenase 1. And interestingly enough, the de novo design compound um, is a selective inhibitor of this enzyme. Here, this is an example how machine learning and de novo design with machine intelligence actually helped identify a new space, a new idea, how to develop selective uh, enzyme inhibitors here for the case of cyclooxygenase. And to uh, loop back to, to the cartoon representation I showed earlier uh, in my talk, 
uh, we've also made uh, made the uh, built a machine that uh, autonomously um, creates new ideas which molecules to synthesize synthesizes these molecules uh, subjects them to to uh, uh, an analysis and feeds back the results into the machine learning system in this case we used a chemical language model um, to uh, to to produce uh, to generate candidate compounds and then in order to facilitate synthesis um, uh, a virtual retro synthesis filter was applied that let pass only those uh, de novo generated molecules that would, could be synthesized by one of or more of 17 allowed reactions, which we uh, implemented in a microfluidic uh, synthesizer. And this is actually a view of the chemistry lab of the future. It's very tiny. This replaces the round flask in the chemical lab uh, in which you can synthesize uh, new molecules in flow in continuous production. On the right hand side, this is an academic lab. This is uh, our lab uh, in, in Zurich. And it, this is an image, a photograph of the first prototype ever uh, of such an autonomous uh, miniaturized laboratory driven by machine intelligence. Now, Big Pharma has adapted, uh, ad, sorry, adopted this technology and these ideas very swiftly. And there are whole labs now running autonomously and help us design and produce new chemicals. Finally, this whole idea can also be used uh, for peptide and protein design. And here is an example. Uh, we train these machine learning system with known peptide sequences, and then uh, sample new sequences. And here is an, an NMR structure, which we solved uh, of one of the uh, compounds. We were aiming here at finding anti-cancer peptides. And indeed, this compound selectively kills anti-cancer cells by destroying cancer cell membranes. Finally, um, small video. What you see here is a breast cancer cell, an MCF7 cell trapped in a microfluidic trap. And uh, it expresses a uh, fluorescent protein. And the peptides, when added to this cell, they, the peptides flow from left to right. You see that the membrane of this cell, this cancer cell, dissolves, it pops open, uh, it bursts. And in this way, um, these computer generated completely new sequences, uh, natural amino acids, but new uh, peptide sequences. Uh, can now be used uh, as tools uh, to selectively uh, kill cancer cells without affecting um, non-transformed human uh, healthy cells. All right, uh, with that, I come to an end. I hope you um, learned today that molecular design with machine intelligence works. It's a matured uh, technology you can use in your own laboratories. It creates uh, surprising solutions, and this is the the most important aspect, uh, I'd say. It helps us make better decisions faster. Uh, faster. And um, many of the computer generated designs have the desired activity with a success rate of somewhere between 50 and 80%. But again, AI is not a magic hammer. Uh, John mentioned it before, I'd like to reiterate here. Uh, always be critical and apply deep thinking together with deep learning to make sense of these computer generated products. Thanks very much. If you're interested to learn more about my phenomenal team who, who did all that and uh, also uh, want to down download a software and use it yourself, check out our website, ModLab, the Molecular Design Laboratory at ETH Zurich.